Yo, what is good friends, back with more tournament coverage, it's the last match of round 1 OLT between Malakis and Eternal Spirit. Eternal Spirit, one of the favorites to win the entire tour, so definitely gonna be fun to watch. Uh, this guy uses Megalati so much, <laughs> but Malakis did do his homeward, brought a Tita, which uh, I think is gonna be Rock's Tita, because Rachi is either Scarf or Spadev, but both Rachis usually don't carry Rocks. Spadev is usually like um, Wish, U-Turn, Iron Head, Protect. And Scarf would just be Iron Head, uh, U turn, Healing Wish, and then a coverage move like Fire Punch. Uh, could also be Trick to help with a stall, though Eternal Spirit usually never uses stall. I don't think it's gonna be Trick Jirachi. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna be Mega Lari with Earthquake Roost, Psychic, Last Move is either Ice Beam or Draco. Because uh, SD Glisco is a huge problem to Malakis team if it's not Ice Beam Lari. I guess if it's Draco Lari, then it has to be HP Ice on Zap to help with the Glisco matchup. Because um, Gilskor can definitely overpower Bulu, especially throughout the game if Bulu like, gets statist or if um, it's as the Ice Fang and Bulu gets chipped a bit, then Gilskor can beat Bulu. Uh, Bulu, not Bulu, Gilskor is definitely going to be SD on Eternal Spirit side and then it's most likely going to be Rocks on the Clef. Uh, I think either the Clef or the Ladi might have T-Wave to help with the Alakazam matchup. And the... Uh, hmm, I'm not really sure. What is the Zemo view on Eternal Spirit side? Because the zone has to be Scarf in my opinion, um, otherwise he's really weak to Kartana outside of Lari. So he Volt Switches out turn 1 and from the damage we can see that's most likely Spadev Jirachi. Just goes in the Glisco to get the Toxic up activated and now Malakis is going to pass the Wish into either the Zap or the Lari here. Um, if it turns Brood has Toxic, this is the turn to go for it, to hit the Lari or the Zap on the Switch. But like I said, I think this is most likely SD Glisco with SD Roost, Earthquake and the last move um, like Ice Fang, Knockoff of Facade, one of the three. Uh, it doesn't have to be Ice Fang because he has other ways to deal with Zygarde, but it could be Ice Fang. Okay, if he doesn't have um, Toxic, if he's SD, which makes a lot of sense, then I think uh, Eternal Spirit could have potentially doubled. Um, but I guess he just wants to see how Malakus reacts to the Lari. Now, Eternal Spirit has to switch out. Malakus knows that he's going to switch out into um, maybe the Clef or the Azu. Um, if he's for some reason AVR, then he could go the Dad, I guess. But I don't think he's going to be AVR, so... Um, this Lari is actually a huge threat in the long run. Though if it's not Draco, Eternal Spirit's Lari can also wall it, because Ice Beam should only do like 45 to 50-ish. Uh, but I assume we're going to see the Clef come out here, unless he's AVR, so... Because <laughs> he still doesn't know if it's Draco or Ice Beam, so he has to go Clef. He cannot go Lari yet if he doesn't know if it's Draco. So he goes Clef. Does he predict that and go for Psychic? Because the switch is so obvious. Yeah, he does predict that. And does 46. So that tells us already that this Clef is running some sort of Spadef, because if Clef was not running Spadef, um, then Psychic would have at least done 47. Uh, it would have done 47.2 to 55.8 if the Clef was just running Max Fist Death. So he definitely runs some Spadef, uh, which helps him check Megalati. Now, uh, Malakas is going to switch out here into Jirachi or Zap. We could see either a Softbolt or the Rocks go up from Eternal Spirit. Um, so I'm pretty sure this Clef is going to be Softbolt, Rocks, Moonblast. And the last move is either Calm Mind, T-Wave or Toxic. Um, if it's Calm Mind or Toxic, then he can go for it here. And then Zap, if it's toxic, eventually is forced out and he can keep the rocks on the field. But he's Calm Mind, which is also fine, because that way he can also keep Zap those out in the long run and get rocks back up. So he just goes for this chest, trying to get the para. I think we just see the rocks go back up. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to softball here, I guess. And Malakis just goes for Defog again. And yeah, now Malakis, since it's only a plus one, I guess he can stay in a bit with the Zap. But eventually he's forced into Jirachi. He goes Jirachi, now there's the full para. Uh, I assume Eternal Spirit went for either Comet or Rocks that turn. Now we're most likely going to see a U turn here for Malakis because he knows Eternal Spirit has the Glisco in the back. Oh, he goes for Wish. Um, Eternal Spirit just gets them back up. Um, yeah, I think staying in with Clef was fine because he does have Glisco and Zone in the back, mainly Glisco, which doesn't care at all about the Jirachi. Uh, because, like, Iron Head doesn't do much and he has Poison Heal. So he U turns back into Zap, most likely, exactly. And um, do we see another Comet or a Moonblast? We will never know, he just gets parried there. So Malakas is going to defog here. Uh, Eternal Spirit's probably going to calm mind up to um, just force the zap out because a plus one Moonblast only does, le does, does less than half, I think. And now he can go for rocks because now he knows zap is forced out, but he gets parried. Um, pretty much going for rocks on the turn zap switches out is better for Eternal Spirit because he does not get pressure stalled out of rocks. And if he goes for rocks on Jirachi and not on zap, then he will have more PP than... Um, more rocks PP than uh, Zap has Defox if it doesn't get pressure stalled. Um, I think Eternal Spirit might switch out into Gliscor or Zonia, probably into Gliscor, um, because Malakas is eventually going to go for Iron Head since the Clefable is at plus 
2. He doesn't want to play around with the Clefable too much. Um, he could still U-turn, but I think Iron Head is a bit more likely this turn, since the Clef is at plus 2. So switching on the Gliscor just makes a lot of sense here, um, if you're Eternal Spirit. And even if Jirachi goes for U-turn, that's not too bad. Um, well, yeah, I guess it's kind of bad for Eternal Spirit, because now that the Clefable is paralyzed, if the Jirachi U-turns on the Gliscor here, Clefable being paralyzed means um, Malakus can actually fish for Spadef Drops, Crits, and um, Paras, but the Ladi versus the Clef, if he spams Psychic. So this is actually bad, but he gets to play right, and uh, Malakus is going to have to switch back into most likely Ladi. Could also go Zap, but I think Ladi makes more sense. Um... Eternal Spirit doubles into Clefable, probably predicting the Ladi, so good play there. That covered also covered the Zap. Um, I would go for Command here, I would not go for Rocks, because the Zap is really obvious, and if you go for Rocks, pressure means you lose two Rocks PP, but he does just go for Rocks. Um, so yeah, I think that's a slight misplay, but he can just Command and force him out and go for Rocks again. Um, like, it doesn't matter too much if he does it correct in the long term. Like, he still has more Rocks PP at the moment than Zap has Defog, so it was not a, it was not a huge deal. But he goes for Rocks again, which I don't agree with. Um, like I said, I think he should call mine and then go for rocks the next turn when Zap is pretty much gonna have to switch out. Um, so does he go rocks for rocks again? Yeah, so Jirachi comes out and now since it's only at plus one, um, Malakus might U turn again or throw of a wish here. And Toronto Spirit, he could stay in, but going into Gliscor is the safest. Um, but yeah, Glisco is not a big deal for Malakith at the moment. Like not not only at the moment, since since this Glisco does not have Toxic to like punish the Ladi or anything like that, it's not a big deal for him. Like if the Glisco had Toxic, I think it would be so annoying for Malakith because can hit Zap, Ladi and Bulu with it. But if it's only like since it's only SD, the Ladi can deal with it. So he wishes he can pass into Ladi as Glisco comes out in SDs. Uh, SDing, I guess. Eternal Spirit wants to force him to eventually go for Ice Beam, and he wants to scout for um, if the Ladi has Ice Beam. Though, um, if he goes Clef here on potential Ice Beam or Draco, but it, I think Ice Beam is, like I said, more likely. But yeah, if he goes Clef here, then he's still forced to Soft Boiled. And since he's paralyzed, that's what I already talked about earlier, then the Ladi can fish for Psychic Spadef Drops, Full Paras, or Crits. So this is really not in Eternal Spirit's favor, as he does get Crit there, which sucks a lot. Now he's in Psychic range. Uh, he's gonna have to switch here. I could see Malakus going for Ice Beam again, anticipating the Ladi to come out, but he just just go for Psychic. I think he should have Ice Beam there, predicting the Ladi. Um, since he now knows that this is Ice Beam, it's obvious that it's like Earthquake is there for Trend most likely. So it will not have Draco, is what I'm trying to say. So Eternal Spirit knows that Ladi can wall this. Spadef Drop sucks there for Eternal Spirit, so he's now forced to switch out again into um, Azu or. Um, like Zone doesn't really beat this as we disconnect there real quick. Um, let me pause it actually. Okay, we are back now. Um, Jirachi goes for Iron Head, which is I, a play I don't agree with. He gets the flinch. We see no leftovers. So this Azu is either AV or Bandit. It's not Citrus Berry. Um, it could be Z Belly Drum, AV. No, it's not Bandit, because the knockoff only did 64 to Jirachi. I don't know why Malakus stayed in there and risked this. I think Malakus should have gone into... Should have U-turned out, which would have done some chip into either Bulu or Kartana, like, he, yeah, okay, now he's just, f oh, what is he doing, dude? Yeah, he obviously went for the flinch, I get that, but losing Jirachi sucks for Malakis, um, no more wish pass into his boys, and Jirachi was also, like, the main one that stopped the comment Clefable, but since the Clefable is paralyzed, I guess it's not too bad, um, so I think we're gonna see Oh, yeah, I was just gonna say Heat Wave, because that kills the Azu and also hits the Glisco, but he has HPIs, so good on Eternal Spirit that he didn't go hard into Glisco there, as he does reveal HPI Zap. So not only does he have Ice Beam on... Um, I think we're just gonna see a Defog here from the from Malakis, and Eternal Spirit is gonna Mega Evolve and most likely go for Ice Beam. I think this Ladi is uh, Ice Beam Roost, and then... I don't know what the last two moves are. It could be Surf Defog, or it could be Surf T-Wave on Eternal Spirit's Ladi, something along those lines. But now Malakis is going to switch out here most likely into T-Tar. Uh, so we could see a double from Eternal Spirit predicting the T-Tar, a double into Bulu or a double into Clef here to get some leftovers on the Clef is definitely an option. I think the Clef is at um, 41, which means 
Um, yeah, I mean, doubling Clefin doesn't get you that much. But yeah, the um, since the HP is killed the Azu from 7%, the Azu also was not a Salt Vest. It was not a Salt Vest, it was not Bandit. I think it may, might have been Z Belly Drum Azu. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure what the Z Movila is on the S side, if it's the Azu or the Bulu, because the Bulu also didn't show anything yet. Bulu might just be Spadef if it's not Z. But yeah, obviously Malakis is not gonna stay in here and risk the zap. Unless he predicts Eternal Spirit to predict the T-Tar and goes for Roost. But I think we're gonna see a double here into either Clef or Bulu, like I said, anticipating the T-Tar to come out. Oh, uh, um, yeah, I don't think there's a point in going for Surf. Especially since he doesn't know anything about the T-Tar yet. Surf would not twit KO T-Tar and then Ladi could be threatened by a Crunch or Pursuit, obviously. I mean, would be, not could be. So it's not in his eternal interest to stay in here. And yeah, like I said, the para that Malekith got on the clef is really helpful. Since he sacked his Jirachi, which is a play that I don't agree with, um, trying to flinch the Azu down. The so double in the blue, anticipating the T-Tar. Uh, good play on Eternal Spirit as he gets it right. Malekith is now going to have to switch out here into either the Ladi or the Kartana. Uh, Kartana... I don't know, both plays are not safe, because if the Bulu is Megahorn, the Ladi could get destroyed by that, uh, which it could definitely be Megahorn, since Eternal Spirit is so weak to Mega Ladi, now that we know the Azu was not a Salt Vest. Um, but Katana is also risky, because it could potentially go for Super Power, but now it just goes for Woodhammer, um, in case the Tita stays and he just wants to get rid of it. And that damage only did 36 with a crit. That's not Bandit, but that's also not Spadef. Um, Gonna run a Kalk on the side. I'm not really sure what type of Bulu this is, but it's obviously forced out here. Um, no, well, it, well, it's a 50-50. He's not forced out, it's a 50-50, right? Since Eternal Spirit has the zone in the bag, which is just... And I assume this Kartana is Choice Scarf, since the Jirachi was Spadef. This is just really bad for Malakis, because if he locks into Smart Strike as the Magnezone comes out, his Kartana gets trapped and he loses it. Um, but if he goes for second sword as the Bulu stays and he's also kind of screwed, so like Malakas in a bad spot here. Like he, Malakas could potentially pull a double um, into the Ladi, which covers the Bulu going for super power and also covers the Magnezone. Could also pull a double into Zap. Like I don't know, at first at first I was like <laughs> he's forced out here, but no, the zone in the back is just so annoying for him. Um, yeah, he could also go back and he could also go to his own Bulo, which would cover a superpower. Or even a Woodhammer again from Eternal Spirit. Um, But I don't know if Eternal Spirit would Woodhammer again if he would stay in. Because that doesn't even hit like Bulu and Ladi that will if Malakis doubles to those. As he doubles to Bulu. Yeah, like maybe Eternal Spirit is choice locked. Could, could he be choice locked? Um, I think Zone is definitely the Scarf and not Bulu. But yeah, we see that Eternal Spirit's Bulu does not have leftovers, right? So I don't know what the item is. There's a slight chance at Z, but I thought the Z was on the Azu. Uh, but yeah, Malakis is a leftovers variant. It's pretty obvious that he's a Spadef leftovers variant. They're probably the Protect instead of Synthesis because he has a Tita, which um, would be bad with Synthesis. So probably Protect as the superpower. Horn Leech, um, yeah, as he just go into Ladi. Though this is this is really fine for Malakis, since the Ladi is eventually forced to heal, and then when the Ladi heals, that gives Tita a free turn. So he doubles into Clef, breaking the Tita. Um, it turns just knowing um, that was a good play because he gets leftovers and grass terrain. But now he still has to switch into Gliscor. Obviously, he, if the Tita is banned, or even if it's not banned, Stone Edge would do a lot. Yeah, if it's not banned, I guess Clef can eat it. Um, but yeah. Glisco can switch into Stone Edge even if it's Bandit and then Roost it off because if you Roost, um, Stone Edge is resisted the next turn if you lose the Flying type as Glisco. Obviously, you would then only be a Ground type and resisted. So, um, Malakis could, I guess, get the Rocks up here predicting the Glisco to come out. Or if he has Ice Punch, you can go for that and bop the Glisco, but I don't think he has Ice Punch. Would he have Ice Punch on this build? Probably not. Um, so, yeah, either Stone Edge or Rocks then. I think Rocks is better, definitely, as he does just throw them up. Would still like to know if he's Bandit or a different item. I don't think he's AV because Jirachi and Bulu were both Spadef already. Um, so Eternal Spirit can now... I don't know, would you Earthquake into the potential Ladi here? Like this is kind of a... Um, this is a huge mind game because Malakis knows that Eternal Spirit knows that he has a Ladi in the back. So he might... Like this is a mind game. Malakis might stay in predicting him to double predicting the Ladi. 
or he might also um, just play it safe, but no. And he turns for reads him. <laughs> okay, that Stonish does 48, which means it's probably not banded. Um, I think Bandit would have done like 60 to 70 ish. And now he goes in the clef, anticipating the Ladi. So it turns is really playing Malikus there. Then he really like read him really well. Like first he earthquakes as he doesn't go Ladi. And then he doubles to clef, anticipating the Ladi. Now he's outside of range, though this is still. Like, even though he predicted him there, this is still bad for Eternal Spirit because Malakus can just spam Psychic. He can either get the. I think it's a 25% chance to get fully paralyzed. He can also get the um, Spadef drop chance. I don't remember how much percent it is. I think it's 10% to get a Spadef drop. And then he can also get the crit chance, which is like. Was it 4%? I forgot. So, like, there's three things he can fish for here Spadef drop, crit, or full para. So, Eternal Spirit is just really weak to this Ladi and yeah not not the biggest fan of this build um his Bulu, his Bulu kinda has to be Megahorn now that I look at this how does he beat Ladi I mean his own Ladi if his own Ladi is healthy and no rocks up it could switch in but yeah I don't think it can so like he's just gonna keep fishing here uh Eternal Spirit's Ladi is at 53 at the moment and rocks up which means um, it cannot switch in because Ice Beam does around 50 and with rocks out that would obviously kill. If the Ladi was healthier it could stay in, uh, it could switch in and then try to win a speed tie and roost up. But even that would be really risky because then you would also risk um, losing the speed tie. You would, even if you win the speed tie then you can still get crit or frozen. So like you can see this Ladi um, it's just such a big problem for ES. Like, it will either get the crits with Death Drop or Full Para if the clef stays in. That's, that's just really obvious. It's, it's gonna happen. And then eventually, what is he gonna do? Like, Zone is at full, okay, but like, Zone doesn't even beat Ladi if he goes to that. So, like, what does he go to? Like, yeah, I assume he's just gonna stay in, but eventually he will get Parrot Crit or Spadef Drop, like I said a few times now. It's not like he can prevent it. Um, the odds are just in Malik's favor here in this scenario. Yeah, as ABR says in the chat, and I already said it as well, three fishing mechan... Me okay, nice bad English, I'm not gonna pronounce that. If he does get the full para there, so now Town Spirit is either gonna have to switch out or sack the clef, and like I said, he doesn't have a good switch in, because um, I think Malakas can go for Ice Beam here, right? Because um, Eternal Spirit could try to pivot into Ladi on the Psychic and then win the Speeder and recover, so he should Ice Beam here, because even if the clef stays in and goes for Soft Boiled, he can then spam Psychic the next turn again and fish for um, either Para, Crit or Spadef Drop again. But if you Ice Beam here, um, that hits a potential Bulu harder and also would kill the Ladi after Rocks. But I guess Psychic would hit the Magnus on harder as he does just Psychic. Okay, um, I think I would have Ice Beam, but he does Psychic and it works out for him as it does do more to the Magnus on. And yeah, he has 10 Psychics left, but it's not like he needs the Psychic PP for anything else outside of the Clef, really. Um, zone gets bopped by Earthquake, the rest of the team gets bopped by Ice Beam, right? So, um, Malakas is fine to stay in here, um, even if the Flash can comes out. The Ladi can easily eat it up, even if it's the minus but definitely as he does Volt Switch here. Um, we either see, we could see Ice Beam again here, or we could see, also see a Roost just playing it extra safe. Like, Roost would just be playing super safe on Malakas, but he does not have to Roost here. Um, he could, he's also free to attack. Ice Beam, Ice Beam seems really free here, yeah, actually. Because Flash Can is not a twit KO, even if the zone stayed in. Um, and Ice Beam also hits Bulu Ladi and Gliska really hard, and Clef would be twit killed, but he does Roost just playing it super safe. So this does not work out for Malakith. I think Ice Beam would have been better. Because now he has to switch out and scout for Mega Horn. Um, yeah, he has to switch out here into either Zapdos or Kartana. Scouting for the Mega Horn, which. Eternal Spirit definitely should have on this build, because how else does he beat Ladi? Um, yeah. Like, I guess his, his, his Clef could have been a bit more Spadef to help versus Ladi, or the Bulu could have been more Spadef leftovers with Megahorn to help versus Ladi, but not, none of that is the case. I'm still not sure what the Bulu spread is, because it's not Bandit, but it's it's not AV either. I, th I don't think it's AV. And he misses a Mega Horn, but at least Malakis scouts for it and makes the correct play. If he stayed in there losing the Ladi, that would have been a huge misplay. Uh, like I said, he had to scout for it. And maybe it sounds weird as choice lock the way his Bulu has been played, because earlier he went for Woodhammer twice. But like I said, it's not Bandit. 
Even if it's banned and not adamant, it would have done... Like, I already cut careful at the side, but banned for some... If that would be a set for some reason, which it's not. That would have done more to the Katana with a crit. And also would have done more to the Bulu that Malekith uh, sent out on the Woodhammer. So it's definitely not banded. Um, it's like non-banded, but it has some sort of attack investment. But it's not adamant. It's like it's like 160 attack evs or 130 or something. <laughs> I don't know. As he, okay, he just attacks there. Um... Malakis, yeah, doesn't really need the Zapdos, so yeah, discharging there was fine. And also, if Bulu is. Yeah, Bulu couldn't kill him there, and he just tried to get the para. I assume he predicted potentially the. Um, he didn't want to let the Clef come in on a turn where he roots, because then the Clef would have gotten leftovers plus grassy terrain. So, discharging there was definitely a good play on um, Malakis' part, as the Clef is at 33. So, yeah. Exactly, he kind of had to attack right there. And I think he has to discharge again here. Because um, I think he might have been out of range from T-Bolt. And he, like I said, he doesn't need the Zap for anything really. Um, like technically the Zap can put in a lot of work. Because it has HP, Ice, 40, the score. It can stall the Ladi out of Ice Beam. So like technically the Ladi can be, the Zap can be really good. But he doesn't need it. Does he discharge again? Yeah, he makes the correct play there. Um, that's like, that's what I just said earlier. Um, discharging again. Um, make sure you cannot bring the Clef in on a roost because then he could get leftovers grassy terrain and he would be healthy and then he could try to soft build up. Um, so he says GG but he does not forfeit yet. Uh, I hate when people do that. Like when you say GG as if it's over, like if you say that then you should forfeit. Like, <laughs> But he's playing it out it seems. So he goes to Ladi. Um, he's either gonna roost or ice beam here. We could see the um, Tita come out from Eternal Spirit or he could go for it. Um, Roost or Discharge as well. Like, it doesn't... He could Roost, I guess. It's not Spirit, yeah. Nah, I don't think he's gonna Ice Beam. He's probably gonna Roost, yeah. Because if he Ice Beams into the Tita, he's screwed. But if he Roosts, then at least he has the chance to potentially live a hit from the Tita. Um, what do we know about the Ladi so far? I don't know, but like... Roost Ice Beam is really obvious. And then, like I said, I think it's either Surf T-Wave or Surf Devog in the last two slots. Uh, since Gliscor already showed SD, it's not going to be the defog on the Gliscor. So he does just go for Roost as Zap, does the same. Yeah, like I said, that was fine for Malekith. He even gets Grass Terrain back because when he Roosts, he loses the flying type. Like, if Zap does, dies, then he gets to go Tita afterwards and Bob the Ladi. And if Zap doesn't, oh, it's defog, okay. So the last move is either Surf or T Wave. But if it's not T Wave, I feel like the Zam matchup is bad for Eternal Spirit's team. So I think it has to be T Wave, but Mono T Wave also sounds really bad. Like, okay, you still have Azu and Gliscor to deal with Heatran if you don't have Surf. But that's still so weird if it's Mono Ice Beam. I think it might... It's either Surf or T-Wave in the last slot. But yeah, this Zap now beats the Ladi since the Ladi got Parrot. <laughs> and um, he only has, like, a, a few Ice Beams, right? Because Zapdos has pressure and can actually stall it out of Ice Beams. And he can just Roost, which loses the Flying type. So Ice Beam does absolutely nothing on the next turn. So I think Eternal Spirit is eventually going to have to switch out here. The thing is, he doesn't really have anything to beat the Zap. This guy gets bopped by HP Ice, so it's H it's non heat wave Zap, which is interesting. Because Bulu anticipating the Roost gets some terrain back, and um, does this Bulu have Edge or would have a Mega Horn, Horn Leech? What's the last move? He doubles into Magnezone there just to get some um, some grassy terrain back. I think Malik is scouted for a potential Edge there, or. He just knows that his Bulu beats the other Bulu, assuming it's Protect, Leftover, Spadev. And yeah, from that Voltage, we can see that that's 14%, that's standard Spadev, Bulu, careful. Uh, Eternal Spirit is gonna have to go to his Ladi here, most likely. And yeah, you guys can just see he's in a... Sp he's not in a position to win, like... I don't know why Eternal Spirit is still playing. Um, his Ladi can only Ice Beam the Bulu, or if it has T-Wave, I guess it can cripple the Bulu. Um, yeah, I guess if he's, if he's not T-Wave, he loses to this Bulu 1v1, but if he's T-Wave, which would mean he would be Mono Ice Beam, which is, sounds really odd to me, um, then he has to hope for Hex. But yeah, now Malakus, after he has these twice, he can go for Horn Leech here, which will do a lot. Does he go for a... Yeah, he has T-Wave. That makes sense, because like I said, he's like... One, his team is not that fast. Scarf Zone is not a fast one at all. Um, the only priority is Aqua Jet on Azu. And his Zen matchup is not that great. So T-Wave Ladi makes a lot of sense. But just T-Wave Defog, Surf. No, no, not Surf. T 
T-Wave Defog Roost Ice Beam. That's so weird. Mono Ice Beam. I don't think I've seen that yet in this gen or in general. But yeah, you can just spam Horn Leech here if he wants to, which does a lot. And eventually, Eternal Spirit will get. Well, I guess he can also get. Malekith can also get paralyzed, as it does happen, yeah. I just said eventually Eternal Spirit will get paralyzed, but the same can happen to Malekith as he does get paralyzed again. So. Uh, maybe this was not the smartest. But to be fair, I don't think it matters too much. The Bulu was, I guess, good for the opposing Bulu, but like he doesn't need it necessarily. Um, also, if the Ladi runs out of Ice Beam, then Scarf Katana can come in on it. Um, how healthy is the Magnezone again? I forgot how healthy the Magnezone is. I think the Magnezone is at 30 or something, right? So yeah, Scarf Katana, if the Ladi runs out of Ice Beam, which it only has 6 left, Scarf Katana can clean potentially with Smart Strike late game, or even... Yeah, with Smart Strike, because a plus one Smart Strike might kill the Magnezone after rocks. Let me call it that. Uh, and if Smart Strike doesn't kill, then the. Let me see. But yeah, he switches out. He knows he cannot beat the Zapdos. HP Ice is there, which is a really good play. Because, um, like, the Magnezone is not a problem, and HP Ice just hits everything better. HPS has so much to the Bulu, like, I'm not so confused what this Bulu is on the end side. It's not AV, um, which is, like, obviously not common anymore these days. It's not Spadef lefties. It's not Spadef Z-move either. It's, like, kind of offensive. From the calcs I've been running, it has, like, 100 attack EVs, 160-ish. Goes to zone, but this is completely fine for Malekith. Um, he can just attack again here. I don't think T-Bull to it KOs. If he wants to play extra save, he can roost, but there's no need for that. But yeah, I wanted to calc how much plus one Kartana does. Um, God, why am I so slow today with the calcs? My second laptop is lagging, I guess that's why. Um, plus one Smart Strike does like 17 to 20, okay. Plus one Leaf Bed does 44 to Magnezone. Okay, so plus one Smart Strike could not sweep, but plus one Leaf Bed would sweep. Um... Yeah, I was just talking about if Ladi runs out of Ice Beam, then the Kartana can technically just lock into move that doesn't even hit the Ladi really well. It didn't have to be Smart Strike, it could also be Leaf Blade. Um, the, the, the reason why I cocked Smart Strike though is because I wanted to know um, if Kartana can just hard clean, because there's still a Bulu on the other side. Though the Bulu might not even have Super Power, he doesn't, I don't think he showed Super Power yet. Um, but yeah, he T-Bolt, uh, Zapdos, Roost, I think I didn't narrate one turn, but yeah, there's not really much to say. This, the Zap turned out to be, like, really useful for Malakis, but he didn't even need it to win. But the pressure stalling out, the PP is just amazing for him. And this Zap pretty much just solos Eternal Spirit at this point. Um, so Eternal Spirit is gonna Roost here, Zap can just HP eyes again. He can also go to T-Tower, but staying in and attacking is completely fine. Just in case Eternal Spirit wants to try to break the T-Tower. Uh, I guess Eternal Spirit has to hope for a freeze, but he only has two more Ice Beams left. Uh, so he's gonna Roost here, which... That turn he could have gone T-Tap written the Roost, but it's completely fine to stay in. Because Ladi is out of Ice Beam soon, only has two more, so he really needs to freeze with the last two. But even if he gets the freeze, I don't think that matters. He does not need the Zap to win. Goes to zone. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I think you just... I think you just HP Ice again here, because in case he... Yeah. Exactly, he pivots into Gliscor. <laughs> he tries to pivot into Gliscor there, predicting like a Roost or Discharge. Like, HPS is just... The Magnezone cannot do it KO you unless it crits you. And if he goes into Bulu, if he tries to go Bulu on a Roost or on a Discharge, HPS is always the better play. And it even hits the Ladi harder. There was just no reason not to, I feel. And I think he only has one Ice Beam left now, which means this is pretty much done, though. Does he get the freeze with the last ice beam? Does not get the freeze, so is he just gonna forfeit? He said GG, which I think he means he's gonna forfeit. I thank you guys for watching. Malakis is up 1 0 in this best of three, uh, last match of ulti round one. And I'll see you guys later with game two. Um, honestly, not the best match. Like, <laughs> I, I've seen like more entertaining matches, but yeah. It's okay, it's okay. We hope for some, I hope for some creative. Stuff. Let's see if Eternal Spirit stays springing Mega Ladi. Like, he uses that mon so much. It's uh, crazy. Like, th sometimes people don't prep enough for it, I feel. Also, um, Eternal Spirit sometimes is really weak to stall, and I feel like people... Not always, but sometimes people should s try to stall him. I don't know. But yeah, peace out, friends. Smash the like button if you enjoyed, even though it wasn't, like, the best game. But I was still okay, right? And peace out.